Mr. Mitsotakis, uh, we are so happy having you on Sky News Arabia. Thank you for accepting our invitation. Thank you. Uh, how do you see, uh, first of all, the future of relations between Greece and the region, and especially with the key strategic partner like the UAE? Well, um, Greece uh, has had uh, strong relationships um, uh, with the countries of the region for thousands uh, of years, and uh, due to our geography, um, we are at uh, the crossroads of Africa, the Middle East, uh, and, and Europe. And uh, for my government, uh, the strengthening of the strategic ties with important countries uh, of the region, in particular the United Arab Emirates, was uh, one of my first priorities uh, since I took over as uh, Prime Minister. This is my second uh, visit uh, to uh, Abu Dhabi. There have been uh, numerous contacts at the ministerial uh, level and I am uh, very happy that uh, today we are uh, signing a joint declaration for a strategic uh, partnership uh, uh, agreement with uh, uh, the government uh, of uh, uh, the UAE. This is an important strategic relationship uh, for Greece. Uh, it has uh, both a uh, foreign policy and defense component but also a very important uh, economic uh, component. I think we have just uh, scratched the surface uh, of the potential of this relationship and I'm very much look for looking forward to uh, discussing with, with Sheikh Mohammed how we can further strengthening, uh, how we can further strengthen what uh, is uh, going to be a great partnership for uh, both our countries. Mm -hmm. This is very important. Uh, what about the economic ties with the UAE? Uh, what are the key sectors for uh, uh, the key sectors of interest uh, for investments from UAE for Greece? Well, uh, we have uh, done a lot to change uh, the perception of Greece since uh, uh, we uh, took over the government um, um, almost uh, uh, 17 months ago. And uh, despite uh, COVID, Greece uh, is emerging as a very attractive investment destination for foreign capital. Uh, in various sectors. Uh, Greece, of course, has a natural uh, comparative advantage in sectors such as uh, tourism uh, and renewable uh, energy, but we're also looking to develop uh, other sectors such as uh, uh, agrotech, um, uh, uh, such as high tech. Uh, um, uh, Greece is a natural logistics um, um, hub for uh, companies uh, that are looking to enter uh, into the European market. Uh, so the discussions that we're having uh, with the UAE, but also with uh, important investment uh, authorities um, uh, of, uh, uh, of the United Arab Emirates is very much revolving uh, around the potential investments uh, in all of these sectors. We're happy that uh, uh, some significant progress uh, has already been, um, uh, been made in terms of real capital that is currently deployed uh, uh, in Greece, and I'm sure we can do much more. Let's move to the Eastern Mediterranean. How do you view developments in your relations with both Egypt and Cyprus, especially in the advancement of stability in this region, in this area exactly? For the Eastern Mediterranean to develop its full uh, potential, we need good relations amongst uh, all the uh, partners in the region. Uh, and Greece has uh, very strong relations, obviously, uh, with, uh, with Cyprus but also with Egypt, uh, with Israel, now with uh, uh, the United Arab uh, uh, Emirates. And it is uh, very important that uh, all countries cooperate uh, in the spirit of good neighborly relations and with full respect uh, to international law. Uh, unfortunately, there's one country, Turkey, that doesn't seem to be playing uh, by, uh, by the rules. Uh, but again, all the uh, collective arrangements that have been um, uh, developed uh, in the Eastern Mediterranean, be it the uh, trilateral relationship between Greece, Cyprus uh, and, and Israel with the participation uh, also of the United States, what we call the three plus one scheme, or, or the trilateral scheme between uh, Greece, Cyprus uh, and, and Egypt. They are, these are um, uh, multilateral arrangements that are at the expense of no one, but they uh, demonstrate the common commitment of the countries that are actually participating uh, in these schemes in fostering um, these types of relationships, uh, resolving uh, our issues uh, uh, to the benefit of, uh, of all our people. Before talking about the benefits uh, of the East Mediterranean Gas Organization, what are in your view uh, the main political and economic challenges 
facing the East Mediterranean Gas Forum? Well, um, the, East Mid uh, the East Mediterranean Gas Forum is, uh, uh, is a very uh, important uh, uh, vehicle that will uh, allow us uh, to further leverage the significant uh, hydrocarbon potential of the uh, Eastern Mediterranean. It is particularly uh, important not just for Greece but also for Europe uh, as a whole. As Europe is looking to diversify its energy sources, uh, the Eastern Mediterranean is at the top of the, uh, of the list of regions that can um, uh, supply uh, the European Union uh, with gas uh, for the foreseeable future as we are making uh, in Europe uh, our energy transition uh, towards clean energy, we know that uh, natural gas is going to be uh, the bridge fuel for the, uh, for, the de for the next decades, for the decades to, to come. So it is uh, very, very important to uh, develop uh, hydrocarbon uh, resources in the Eastern Mediterranean and then of course to transport them um, uh, to the European markets. And I think that is the, the concept behind uh, the Eastern Mediterranean um, uh, Gas Forum. And that is why cooperation amongst various actors is absolutely necessary in order to develop the full potential um, uh, of the Eastern Mediterranean uh, hydrocarbon basin. What about the challenges? Oh, the challenges, I think there's one big challenge and that is uh, uh, unfortunately uh, Turkey. Uh, Turkey has been behaving in a, uh, in a very provocative manner. Uh, certainly over the past uh, year since, uh, uh, since uh, I took over as Prime Minister, I have extended the hand of friendship uh, to Turkey and I have numerous times uh, asked uh, President Erdogan to work together in the spirit of, uh, uh, of cooperation uh, to resolve uh, issues that we may have between our two countries. But Turkey currently is acting as a, as a disruptor. Uh, in, uh, in the region, uh, and this is uh, uh, an observation that goes beyond the, the, the Greek-Turkish uh, relations. Look what is happening uh, in, in Cyprus, uh, in Libya, uh, in the Caucasus. Uh, uh, there doesn't seem to be a common understanding uh, with Turkey uh, regarding uh, important strategic um, priorities, and this is not just an observation. Uh, that is coming from uh, from Greece. I'm sure that many other countries in the region uh, share the same view regarding um, uh, Turkey's uh, disruptive role in the region. How do you see the EU position uh, toward Turkish provocation in the Eastern Mediterranean and what are your options as well going forward? We've made it uh, very clear to Turkey uh, at the level of the uh, European Union uh, leaders that there are um, two paths uh, open. Uh, for Turkey. Uh, there is a road of, uh, uh, of cooperation uh, and there is uh, uh, another road which will uh, strain the relationship between um, uh, uh, Turkey and the European Union and uh, would uh, inevitably lead to consequences uh, for uh, Turkey. Uh, we made it very clear that in order to pursue the first path, which is the preferred path uh, for me but also for all European countries, Turkey needs to clearly demonstrate that it will stop its aggressive uh, behavior in the Eastern Mediterranean vis-a-vis uh, -vis both Greece and uh, Cyprus. Uh, we have a deadline, which is the next European Council in December, to take stock of what has happened over the past months uh, and uh, uh, reach uh, uh, a decision uh, regarding a common European approach towards Turkey. Unfortunately, uh, we haven't seen uh, Turkish provocations uh, stopping uh, over the past weeks uh, and months. There is a continuous challenge of uh, uh, Greek um, um, uh, sovereign uh, rights in the uh, Eastern Mediterranean and a highly, highly uh, provocative uh, behavior uh, in, uh, in Cyprus, uh, which uh, uh, doesn't make me uh, very optimistic that we can soon reach a point where we can be talking about meaningful de-escalation. But Turkey accuses Greece, uh, Mr. President, of airspace and naval infringement. And what is your response to their claims? The Greece is, has never been uh, the aggressor uh, in its relationship uh, with, uh, with Turkey. We have one important, outstanding uh, difference uh, with uh, Turkey, and that is the delimitation uh, of our maritime zones in the Aegean and the eastern uh, Mediterranean. Uh, Turkey has been clearly uh, you know, uh, infringing, um, uh, the, uh, violating the Greek airspace numerous times. There have been overflights uh, over Greek islands. All these have been very clearly um, uh, documented. And it's a pattern, a constant pattern of provocative behavior that actually goes, uh, goes back um, uh, many years. But we have what has changed uh, is the open challenge of Greece's sovereign rights 
vis-à-vis um, -vis, uh, our exclusive economic zone. And I was very, uh, and, I'm, and I'm very open with, uh, with President Erdogan, uh, and what I'm offering is uh, uh, very, very simple. Turkey stops you know, the provocations at sea. Uh, we sit down within the context uh, of uh, the exploratory talks uh, framework to discuss uh, the, the issue of uh, the, the limitation of our maritime zones. And if we cannot agree, um, uh, we can go to the international court uh, and agree that the international court will make the decision on our behalf. We have been able, uh, as, uh, as Greek government, to sign uh, a delimitation agreement with Italy. We also signed the delimitation agreement with Egypt. Um, we have agreed with Albania to go to the international court uh, and uh, uh, let the international court take the decision of our behalf regarding the delimitation of our maritime zones. So we've demonstrated that we can play by the rules. But the rules are determined by international law. Uh, and uh, that is what uh, uh, I'm actually uh, in encouraging uh, Turkey uh, to do, respect the framework of international uh, law, which very clearly defines what uh, our rights are. And if Turkey thinks that they have a, a reasonable claim, they shouldn't be afraid of taking the issue to the, uh, to the international uh, uh, court. Uh, we feel that uh, we have international law uh, on our side and we will uh, continue um, to stand uh, by our uh, position uh, and uh, of course you know, defend our, uh, our sovereignty and our sovereign rights. But we never uh, sought and we will never seek you know, a militarization of a conflict uh, mm -hmm. uh, with Turkey, but we will also stand firm in terms of uh, defending our sovereignty and our sovereign rights. How do you see the future of this conflict? Uh, is there light at the end of the tunnel? There should be light at the end of the tunnel because we are destined by geography uh, and by our common history to live together uh, side by side and um, uh, in peace. I think there's a lot of common uh, between the Greek and the, uh, and, and the Turkish um, uh, people. And uh, if we could uh, you know, break the ice and establish a, f a, a framework of, of reasonable cooperation, it would be to the benefit of Turkey, to the benefit of Greece and to the benefit uh, of the European Union. But in order for this to happen, we need to see um, this relationship uh, through the same uh, lens, uh, through the same um, uh, perspective. And I'm afraid that this is currently uh, not happening in, uh, in Turkey. But I, I, I don't, I'm an optimistic uh, uh, person. I know that also in the past we've gone through periods uh, of, uh, uh, of, of heated tensions that were followed by um, uh, periods of, uh, uh, of, of, of detente and of uh, constructive cooperation. Uh, a month ago, a catastrophic earthquake uh, struck between, uh, uh, between Greece uh, and, uh, and Turkey. I extended the hand of friendship. I called President Erdogan. You know, he, um, uh, he reciprocated to offer my condolences for the loss of life uh, uh, in, uh, in Smyrna and our, uh, and our uh, uh, assistance should the Turkish side uh, uh, require it. Uh, but, you know, we don't need you know, an earthquake to remind us that we, that we are neighbors and we live side by side and that there is more to gain by uh, uh, looking for win-win solutions rather than uh, um, uh, uh, sort of investing in, uh, in conflict and confrontation. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Mitsotakis, uh, for giving us this interview. Thank you. Thank you Thank very you much. Thank you for uh, being with us and hope to see you very soon. Pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank you.